Why do so many people sell their power conditioners? Here's something that uh, you don't get asked every day, and it's from Phil in Virginia. Paul, I'm sure this will hit home for you, but it's an honest question. Why do so many people who have power conditioners sell them time over time? And many say the soul came back when they plugged back into the wall directly. Could it not be that they are getting decent AC to their homes or the change of sound they thought they liked in the long run, the change in the sound which I'm sure all conditioners do make, is not as good in the end as from the wall? I think it also depends on the quality of gear that power supplies, uh, uh, of the gears, power supplies and designs, but uh, I'd love to know your input on it. If anybody knows, it would be you. Thanks, Phil. Well, how kind. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> no surprise, have an opinion on the subject. So when I first started in 1992 or three, thinking about power conditioners. That was back at the time when Arnie Newdell and I had founded Genesis Technologies. We started that in 1990 in Vail, Colorado. And I had really never given a whole lot of thought to power conditioners. Uh, a, a little bit. We had PS Audio in the late 80s made an isolation transformer called a power sonic it was a 500 watt isolation transformer and it seemed to do some nice things mostly softened up the sound it had good and bad points but we thought you know in some cases it might actually benefit people and in some cases i think it did but other than the power sonic i had never really paid much attention to it so in the early 90s, when I was in Vail with Arnie and doing Genesis Technologies, we used to get all sorts of products to try and, and to see. And I think the first one we ever got was, was it Bruce Brisson's? I think it was, a, yeah, it was an MIT Z stabilizer. So the... I'm not sure what's even in the Z-stabilizer. I mean, Bruce usually does some kind of amalgam of capacitors and inductors and things. And it, um, I think we also had a Tice power block, which would have been isolation transformers. But anyway, we had this Z-stabilizer and we plugged it in. And the, I'll never forget it. The very first reaction that I had with that MIT Z-stabilizer was, wow, cleaner. Immediately, a lot of the grunge, uh, it, it, was, it was cleaner. And uh, I, both Arnie and I were quite surprised because we really didn't think at the time that it would make a whole lot of difference. And you have to put yourself back in place in those early 90s. Very few products had detachable power cords back then. I mean, there, there, wasn't, there wasn't really a lot of interest in, in external power cords. I remember Bill Johnson of Audio Research, he was, you know, he, I'll never have a detachable power cord on an Audio Research product. I mean, never. And, and a few did, most didn't. There wasn't a whole lot paid, uh, attention paid to power. But my first reaction, and Arnie's as well, super clean, noticeable difference. And you could go back and forth, and it was obvious. But over time, and I think this is what you're referring to, we noticed that the added cleanliness came at the cost of sterility. It not only stripped off something that made it sound cleaner, but it also seemed to strip away upper level harmonics and valuable parts of the musical presentation that were critical to uh, the enjoyment and to the illusion, to the enjoyment of music and the illusion of, of, being, of being live. So after a while, we went back in the wall as well. And we would get, oh gosh, who sent us stuff? I think uh, Mel Schilling sent us something. Everybody was kind of playing around with the idea back then of 
maybe power as a category was kind of of a thing. And, and things came and went, and then it all kind of fizzled out. It wasn't until 97 when I left Genesis, and Arnie and I had our, our breakup, which was tough, um, that I really started going back to my roots because when, and I restarted PS Audio, and I started thinking again about power and why should a power conditioner, a passive power conditioner, why should it strip away that which we wanted to keep and what causes that? And I remember thinking, you know, it's kind of like the pots in a box. When I used to make, uh, you know, preamps and we had a, a straight wire. So pots in a box was when we went to straight wire, we cut out the line stage of the preamplifier and it just went straight through a pot, adding impedance to the line. And when we did that, it got cleaner, but it also lost some of the life in a, very, in a way that was very similar to what I was hearing with power conditioners. And I thought to myself, you know, I'll bet it's impedance. So I made a simple experiment. We took uh, a, a power cord and I hacked into the thing and I started adding resistors. I added 0.1 ohm resistors, 0.2 ohm resistors. These are power resistors. And to see what was the net effect. What, what happened when we added some minor resistance? And, and we're talking, you know, a, a tenth of an ohm. And aha, we started losing ambience and life. So logically, if we were to do the opposite and lower the impedance, then maybe we'd get more life. And that is how I came up with the beginnings of the idea of the AC regenerator. I don't think there's one around here, but anyway, uh, that actually lowers output impedance because it regulates the power down to a tenth of a volt. And, and then all of a sudden the exact opposite happened. Now the, the dynamics, the life, uh, just exploded and we had a product called the power plant and to this day people still conflate erroneously the two together power plant regenerators are not power conditioners because they do the opposite instead of cleaning by inserting a series resistance whether it be an inductor or whatever power plants regenerate new AC and regulate the power replacing lost energy, which a passive power conditioner can't do, and in so doing, it has the exact opposite effect. So, you, you know, when, when you ask why so many people are sending in their power conditioners, well, it's pretty obvious. You can, you can hear it, you can see it, but that doesn't happen with power plants. There's just thousands upon thousands of them out there in the world humming along. Well, they don't really hum. <laughs> Making great music. So, all right, enough. Thanks for the question. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow.